In this video, we're going to talk about the second part of binomial distribution. So what's important to know for this video is that for any random variable x, which is binomially distributed, where the number of trials is n and the probability of a success is p, we're going to be able to calculate the expected value. Remember, the expected value is our long-term average. So this expected value is the number of trials times the probability. The mode is the value of x that's going to be the highest probability. So if we look at all the possible outcomes in our binomial distribution, we're going to look at each probability individually. And the one that's the highest probability will be the mode, the one that's happening the most often. Variance. Now, the way to calculate the variance of the um, random variable x is this formula here. Now, what is this formula? It says, n times p. So it's the expected value, n times p, times the probability of a failure. Now this probability, let's think about it a little bit more. In a binomial distribution, we can either have a success, which is p, or we can have a failure. Well, both these probabilities will be adding up to 1. So 1 minus p, this is going to be the probability of getting what we call a failure. So what we're doing when we're finding the variance is we're multiplying the expected value times the probability of the other outcome, so the outcome of a failure. This formula is given to you in the formula booklet, so you'll never have to remember it by heart. What's not given to you in the formula booklet is the formula for standard deviation. Well, we know that the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So once you have the variance, which is given to you in the formula booklet, then you can square root that and you can find what your standard deviation is. These are the formulas that will be given to you in the formula booklet. So the expected value, which is the mean, the long-term average, and our variance. Let's try and do a couple examples. First example, given that x is distributed binomially, where n is equal to 16, so 16 trials, and p is equal to 0.8, 80% chance of success, what is the expected value and what is the variance? Well, the expected value, that is n times p, so we can write that down. So that is 16 times 0.8. We go in our calculators, 16 times 0.8. Our long-term average is going to be 12.8. So we're expecting on average 12.8 to be the outcome here. Now, notice that this number is not an integer value. Well, that's okay, because when we're looking at averages, it doesn't always make sense, the number that's given to us. It's a mathematical, cal a mathematical calculation. So that is okay, even though we're dealing with discrete values. Next, we're looking for the variance. Now, the variance is our formula. So NP, that's our expected value. I can simply write that this is equal to 12.8 because we just did that calculation. And then we're going to multiply this by 1 minus the probability of success, so 0 0.8 in this case. And we can put this into our calculator. So remembering the shortcut for our calculator, we can go ahead and highlight what we want, click Enter, and then we're multiplying this by 1 minus 0 0.8, closing bracket, and we get that the variance is 2.56. Next example, a fair die is rolled 12 times, and x is the number of sixes that is the result. Find the mean, variance, and standard deviation. So let's talk about this situation. First, we're rolling 12 times. So 12 times, this is the number of trials we have. We're gonna have that n is equal to 12. Next, we're told that x is the number of sixes. Well, the number of sixes, what is the probability of getting a six on a single row? Well, that's going to be one out of six. So we have a binomial distribution because we have a fixed number of trials. We know what the probability of our success is. If we get anything else, that's going to be a failure. So anything but a six is a failure for us. So a binary event. And the probability is independent every time I roll. So I can go ahead and find the mean, variance, and standard deviation. The mean is going to be our value of n times our probability. So we can put a fraction in here, 1 over 6. So my mean is going to be 2. My variance, we're using the formula, which says that it's the mean times 1 minus 
the probability of success, so 1 minus 1 over 6. So we have the variance is going to be equal to 5 thirds. And the last step is to find our standard deviation. Now our standard deviation, that is simply the square root of the variance. So since I know what my variance is, I can square root that. So in my calculator, second x squared, oh, I hit the wrong button, let me clear this, second x squared, and then we want to highlight what the variance was, so I can highlight, click enter, and enter again. So I get that the standard deviation for this question is 1.29. Example 6. Given that x is distributed binomially, where we have 16 trials, an unknown probability for success, but we know that the expected value is 7.5, find the probability p. Okay, so for this question, we can use the equation for expected value. We know that the equation for expected value in our formula booklet is that the expected value is equal to n times p. So we plug in the numbers we know. The expected value is 7.5, and we know n is equal to 16. So this is equal to 16 times p. So we have a situation here where we have one equation, one unknown. So I'm going to use my calculator, and I'm going to use numeric solve. So you go on to math. The shortcut is to go the up arrow, numeric solve. And then each box represents one side of the equal sign. So I have 7.5 in one box. And then my other box is 16 times. I can't put P, so I need to put the X value. Next, you click on your graph. And then you need to click on the graph again in order to solve. And what we see on our calculator is that P is going to be equal to 0 0.469 if we round to three significant figures. Example 7 for today is a little bit more challenging. Given that x is binomially distributed, the mean is 12, the variance is 8, find the probability that x is equal to 10 and that x is bigger than or equal to 10. Okay, so we have a binomial distribution where we are not told what the value of n is, so the number of trials, and we're not told what the probability of success is. In order to answer our questions, finding these probabilities, I first need to find out what is n and what is p. Once I have this, then it's a binomial PDF question and then a binomial CDF question for the other one. But I need to be able, CDF, I need to be able to find n and p first. So let's start by focusing on the information that we're given. We're told that the expected value is equal to 12. Let's create a formula with this. Using the equation in the formula booklet, we're told that the expected value is equal to n times p. So the first equation I can build is that 12 is going to be equal to n times p. The second equation I can build, let's look at the variance. Again, variance is a formula in the formula booklet. So we can create the equation 8 is equal to np times 1 minus p. Now we notice that in both of these equations, we have n times p and n times p. So what I can do is in my blue equation, I can replace the np by 12 because we're told 12 is equal to n times p. So let me change colors. So now I have an equation that has one unknown. So I can use numeric solve in order to find this value of p. So in your calculator, we go math, numeric solve, and one side of the equal sign is 8, and the other side is 12 times 1 minus x. And I can click OK, solve, and I get the value for p. So this value for p, we have 0 0.33333, so I can write it as a fraction, and it's p is going to be equal to 1 third. So I have one part that I need. The next is I need to find out what n is. So I can use the value of p, which is a third, and into this equation, I have 12 is equal to n times 1 third. So again, I can use numeric solve to find the value of n. So I'm going to quit this. Math, scroll up, numeric solve. One side of the equal sign is 12. The other side is going to be x times, and I can do a fraction, 1 over 3. 
we're going to click on graph and graph again to, to solve. And we get that n is equal to 36. Now we have the information we need in order to answer the two probability questions. So the first one is, what is the probability that x is equal to 10? Well, if we're looking for the probability of exactly one number, then we're going to be using binomial PDF that we remember from the last video. So we're going to go into our calculator. We're going to quit this. We're going to go second function vars. And we're going to find binomial PDF. Our number of trials we just said was uh, 36. And our probability is 1 divided by 3, so 1 third. And the value of x we're looking for is 10. So we get the probability of having exactly 10 is 0 0.114 if you round to three significant figures. Now the next question is what is the probability that x is bigger than or equal to 10? Now remember our calculator can only give us for CDF from 0 all the way to a value. So if I create a mini probability distribution table here, I'm going to be going from 0, and then the biggest probability I have is the value of n, so we have 36. So we're going to be going from 0 all the way to 36. What I'm interested in is exactly 10 or bigger. So I'm interested in having 10 or bigger. This is the probability I'm looking for here, right? Well, in order to do this, the calculator can only find out from 0 all the way to a value. So my calculator can go from 0 all the way to a value. Now, I already included 10 in what I'm interested in, so the next value I have is going to be 9. So what I do with my calculator is I'm going to find this probability that's in pink. So this probability, I'm going to go second function bars, find my binomial CDF, my number of trials is 36. My probability is 1 divided by 3. And I'm going to put in the value of 9 because I'm interested from 0 all the way to 9. This probability is going to be 0 0.1896. And what I want is I want the orange probability. So I'm going to have to do 1 minus this pink probability. So I'm going to get that the probability of having something bigger uh, or equal to 10 is 0 0.810 if you round to three significant figures. So your final answer for this question is 0 0.810.